The next step in this turnout build is to form and solder our stock rails to the PC board ties that we insert into the fixture in the last step. Uh, the stock rails are these outside rails. There's two of them. There's a straight route stock rail and a diverging route stock rail. Um, what makes these rails a little bit unique is a small section of the base of the rail on the stock rail around at the uh, area where the switch points are has to be removed in order to allow the switch points to close tight up against the head of the rail. If I turn this turnout over you can see underneath where that's been done. There's a section here uh, where the base has been filed away and that way the switch points can close up tight. If we didn't have that done they wouldn't be able to to close up tight. Uh, and there's a process for doing that and I'm going to show that in this video. Installing the stock rails can be broken down into five steps. One, we cut the rail to length using the fixture as a guide. Two, we mark an area on the stock rail where we're going to remove uh, a portion of the base of the rail that will allow the switch points to close up tight against the stock rail. Three, using uh, a stock aid tool, we remove the base of the rail. Four, we solder the stock rail to the PC board ties. And five, we repeat the process again for the uh, opposite stock rail. So we're going to need to determine uh, how long of a piece of rail to cut. And like we did when we were doing our frog points, it's best to use a quick stick sitting on the fixture. That way we know that we've got a piece of rail that's going to be long enough to span the entire turnout. Uh, I like to cut it an inch or two longer on either end um, than, the, than the quick stick. And that way we know we've got enough rail hanging out that we can fit it into the rest of the track work around it. We've cut one piece, and I'm just going to drop it into the fixture. We need to mark on the rail the section of uh, the base of the rail that we want to remove. Um, and that area is uh, just behind the throw bar tie, so that's where the back of the switch points will be. And I just put a little mark on the top of the rail with a marker. And then we want to mark where the two routes diverge from each other. You can see on the fixture where the two grooves separate from each other and it's at that point that we want to remove the base of the rail up to. So I'm just going to put a little mark on top of the rail at that spot, right where the two routes diverge. Um, to make this doubly clear, I like to actually take the marker and draw a nice solid mark like that right on the base of the rail. So where that's been blackened, we want to remove that section of the base of the rail. There's a couple of ways we can do that. Um, the easiest and most precise is to use a, a stock aid tool. It's designed specifically to do this job. It uh, holds the rail securely, leaving uh, a portion of the base of the rail exposed. And we just file off flush with the edge of the tool and that'll, uh, that'll completely remove the base but leave the rest of the rail intact. Another way that works quite well is to use a bench top belt sander. Uh, I've done this for many years and get, you get really good results with it. And third, you can do it by clamping the rail into a vise and carefully filing away the base of the rail. But for this build, I'm actually going to use a, a stockade tool to do the job. That's, uh, that's the preferred method. I'm using this one here that's been around since the beginning of time. I've uh, actually built quite a few turnouts with this, and uh, so it looks a little bit beat up, but it works perfectly. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on how to use the tool in this video. There's a separate one for that that covers it uh, much more clearly. So this rail is the diverging route stock rail, and this is the one with the curve in it. And it's uh, it's kind of important to pre-bend the rail a little bit. Um, if you just drop it in the fixture and uh, force it around the, the curve, solder it in place, it'll hold, but it's going to put a lot of stress on that rail. The geometry on our turnouts will consist of the straight track running right up to the end of the switch points. Then there's a slight angle here. This starts to diverge away on an angle, not a radius. And then around the H tie, there's a small radius, and it's, this radius blends in to where the uh, frog is, and then it's straight again. So I like to uh, try and simulate that. So we put a little bit of a bend, and it's not much, right at the end of our switch point. So you can see where that's kind of kinking away a little bit. I just check it with the fixture and see how it matches up. That's pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be there. And then starting about the end of where we removed the base of the rail, I like to just curve it with my fingers a little bit like that, just to uh, just to introduce the, a radius in the piece of rail, and that way it, it follows along the shape of the uh, groove in the fixture a lot closer. Um, now, I've done a million of these. That's why I got that right the first try. Uh, it, it can take a little bit of practice, and it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Um, just important that you do have... Uh, a radius in there and, and you're not forcing the straight rail around the corner. 
Okay, we're ready now to solder this uh, this rail in place. And what I like to do is uh, put the rail into the fixture and solder it to the S tie um, or the H tie, depending on which type turn you want. But I like to solder it completely to one tie first, and then go back and apply the flux and solder it to the rest of the ties. I find this way it it stabilizes the rail in place, gets it in the correct position, and then you can go back and work on it without worrying about it flipping over or popping out of the fixture. Okay, I'm just going to make sure I got the rail uh, aligned in the fixture properly and where I want is the, the back of the notch on the base of the stock rail that we just removed to be just behind the throw bar tie, somewhere back here and that way our switch points will certainly fit in here properly. So I'm going to put it right there and then move up to the S tie and I'm going to solder that in place. Start with a little bit of flux on the tie like that. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on soldering. There's a separate video that covers that a lot better. Just going to put a little bit of weight on the rail to hold it stable while I work and get some solder in place here. What's very critical when you're soldering the rail to the ties is that you make sure the rail is sitting flat on the tie, that it's not sitting in there on an angle. That's, uh, that's absolutely key to getting good results. So now we got the first tie soldered in place. I'm going to go back and uh, apply flux and solder the rest of them. When I applied the flux, I didn't put any flux in here because I'm not going to put any solder on this side of the rail. It's, uh, this is where the guardrail is going to sit and if I put solder here then the guardrail is going to end up sitting on top of the solder. So we don't want any solder at this location and that's the same when I do the other side. I won't put any solder in here. Now you notice I left this this tie to the very end and I'll, I'll show you why. There is a small section here where the rail is only supported on one side of the groove and there's actually clearance on this side. So there's no way to ensure that the rail sits properly in location. See how I can move it back and forth there? And that can actually affect the geometry of the uh, finished track work. So what I'm going to do when I solder this in place is I'm going to make sure that this is pushed tight against the outside and then solder it. And then I'll do the same thing when I solder this one, making sure that these two rails are spread apart from each other while the solder cures. Otherwise it'll kind of crowd the point a little bit in here and it can cause the points from uh, closing up properly at the back of the turnout. Again, I'm only going to apply flux on one side and I'm only going to put solder on one side because if I get solder in here it'll interfere with the switch points. So while that's freezing, I'm actually pushing the rail out towards the edge of the fixture and that's going to make sure that it's sitting properly in that groove the way that we want it to. Okay, that uh, the diverging route rail is soldered in place, so now I'm going to just repeat the process again for the straight route rail. It's, gonna be the, it's the same thing. You just mark and remove the base of the rail, lay it in the fixture, and solder it in place. Okay, and as I mentioned uh, when I was soldering the diverging route rail, um, soldering this tie, it's important that I make sure that the two rails are spread as far apart from each other as possible. Okay, now that's done. The two stock rails are soldered in place, nice and solid, and uh, we're ready to move on to the switch point rails.